Today we're checking out five things that are absolutely worth spending some extra money on for your home studio. In my last video, we went over some things that probably aren't worth the money when it comes to building your home studio, but I wanted to cover some things that actually will make a big difference and help you make better recordings and mixes. So diving right into the list, the first thing you should absolutely spend a little money on is quality instruments. This might sound super obvious, but when I first started recording, I spent all my money on preamps and mics and all that stuff, assuming that whatever instruments the bands I was working with would bring in would be great. Not so much. This is where all your sounds start, so it's worth it to get it right. Having a decent guitar and bass at the studio can absolutely save a project when a band brings in a barely functioning instrument with terrible intonation. And you don't have to spend a fortune on this. Even something like the nicer Squires or Epiphones or Sterlings or whatever can be great. Just bring them to a tech to get them set up properly if you don't know how to do it yourself. If you record live drums, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is that much like with guitars and basses, you don't need a super high-end kit to get great drum sounds. A mid-range kit tuned well with fresh heads will sound fantastic. Fantastic. Now for the bad news. You really can't skimp on cymbals. To a point at least, the more you spend on cymbals, the better they'll sound. So just skip the Sabian B8s or Zildjian ZBTs and go for something nicer. It'll make a big difference in your drum sounds. If money is tight, keep an eye on Craigslist and Reverb. I've gotten some really good deals on used Zildjian A's over the years. Now, number two on our list is kind of tied into that last one, but it deserves its own spot on the list. And that's guitar cabs and speakers. I made a video a while back about which makes a bigger impact on your guitar tone, the amp or the cab. I'll link that up here if you wanna check it out. But if I had the option between a cheap amp with a great cab or a great amp with a cheap cab, I'm picking the great cab any day. And yet, for a lot of people, the cab is a complete afterthought. Don't make that mistake. If you're recording big distorted guitars for pop punk, rock, or hardcore, you're going to want either a 2x12 or a 4x12 cab. First off, they just sound bigger and better for these styles of music. Trust me, I tried saving space with 1x12 cabs early in my career, but once I made the switch to the larger cabs, there was no going back. Someday I want to make a video comparing cab sizes, but... We'll see. But anyway, the other benefit to a 212 or 412 cab is that you can put different speakers in it to get a variety of sounds. A few speaker options I would recommend are the Vintage 30, of course, the Celestion Creambacks or Greenbacks, or I recently got a Fane F30 that sounds incredible too. I have a video coming soon comparing these so you can hear the differences and find your favorite. So keep an eye out for that. But there are a ton of cool speaker options. And once again, if you shop used, you don't have to completely break the bank here. In my area, at least, there are constantly beat up Marshall 1960 cabs for dirt cheap. Grab one of those, swap out at least a couple of the speakers in it, and you're good to go. This applies to amp sims too. If you're not loving your amp sims, most let you use your own impulse responses. So try picking up a killer new IR pack instead of a whole new amp sim plugin. And hey, if you're digging this video, my whole channel is dedicated to helping people make awesome recordings and mixes at home. So be sure to subscribe so I can help you out too. Now for the third thing you should absolutely spend some cash on, a good vocal mic. As much fun as it is to dial in awesome guitar tones and drum sounds, vocals are the most important part of the song, like 99.9% .9 of the time. Plus, our ears are really, really in tune with what a human voice should sound like. So getting the tone of the vocal right at the source is super important. Like obviously it's best to get everything sounding right at the source, but you can ultimately maul a kick drum with absurd amounts of EQ, completely changing the fundamental sound of the drum, and it can still sound great in a mix. But try that with vocals and something just feels off. That's why it's important to get a decent vocal mic. There are quite a few solid budget options out there. There's the Shure SM7B, of course. That one is almost never my favorite mic for any singer, but it also pretty much never sucks. So that can be a great option if you just want something that'll work on anyone. Then there's the 3U Audio Warbler. I did a full review on that mic that I'll link up here. Those are great if you want something a little on the colored side of things. Or Lewitt makes some great mics for not a ton of money that are more kind of clean and sparkly sounding if that's your thing. Or if your budget is really tight, even just an SM57 or 58 will get the job done and probably sound better than anything else in that price range. Moving on to number four on our list. Drum samples, specifically mine. Okay, I'm just kidding with that one. Although they are, in my extremely biased opinion, the best drum samples out there. If you do wanna check them out, I'll put a link to them in the description down below. There's even a free pack you can grab. But now for the real number four, good headphones or monitors. It's really hard to make great sounding tracks if you can't hear what the heck you're doing. That's why buying the cheapest monitors you can find is probably not the best idea. There's a few things to keep in mind when choosing what to get here. First off, your money will go a lot farther with headphones than with monitors. For instance, I absolutely love the Bayer DT880 headphones. They sound fantastic, are comfortable enough to wear all day long, and I would have no problem mixing on them. 
and they're only around 200 bucks or so. I've never heard a pair of $200 speakers that come anywhere close to sounding that good. So if your budget is tight, headphones might be the way to go. But if you prefer monitors, try to push your budget just a little bit if possible to get something decent. A little bonus tip here. Regardless of what monitors or headphones you end up with, the most important thing is getting to know them. Just regularly listen to music on them so that you know them inside and out and understand exactly what a good mix should sound like on them. This will make your life way easier. And finally, last up on our list, and he knew this one was coming, acoustic treatment. If you're recording literally anything with a microphone, your room is going to affect the sound. And if you're using monitors as opposed to headphones, your room is going to have a huge impact on the way they sound. So if you want your recordings to sound good, and if you want to accurately hear what's coming out of your speakers, you're probably going to want to do some acoustic treatment. Like I mentioned in my video on things not to waste your money on, you did watch that video, right? Acoustic foam is not the way to go here. If you search DIY acoustic panels on YouTube, you can learn how to make absorption panels that actually work for pretty cheap. Even just a few of these around your mix area will greatly improve the sound of your room. Another easy and affordable thing you can do, this is more to cut down on the amount of room getting into your mics in your recording space as opposed to treating your mixing space. But you can get some super heavy duty packing blankets and drape them over a mic stand to create an impromptu gobo. You can put a couple up around your singer or guitar amp or drums or whatever to dry them up a little bit if that's what you're going for. I'm sure I missed about a hundred things on this list. So let me know in the comments, what's something you think is absolutely worth spending a little extra cash on? And if you haven't already seen my video on things not to waste money on, you can watch that right here. Or you might dig this video on my 10 must-have studio accessories. But anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.